Hey guys, it's Vera, and today we are going to talk about the brand new set that was announced for Magic the Gathering called Modern Horizons. Now, they did release it and announce it in a live stream last night, and we don't know all of the information surrounding the set, but they did give us quite a bit of information, and they also did give us two card spoilers. So I am going to read through all of the information that we know, go over that, tell you what Modern Horizons is, and let's just jump straight into it. So the first thing that we know is Modern Horizons is going to be modern legal. It is skipping standard, but it's going to be modern legal, of course. Uh, all the other formats, Legacy, Vintage, Commander, etc. Now this is, in a way, comparable to the Conspiracy sets. Uh, this time around, it's modern Legacy, Vintage, Commander legal, whereas the other sets, like Conspiracy, were just Legacy, Vintage, Commander legal. So if, in terms, we're talking about sets like the Conspiracy sets, this is a little bit different. Uh, same with Battle Bond. It's a little bit different than those sets, even though I'm going to assume that it is kind of comparable to that. Now, a lot of people are kind of calling this, you know, another master set. I wouldn't truly call it another master set. I would call it more leaning towards a special set, like Battle Bond, like uh, Conspiracy, because be because we have last year saw Battle Bond about once a year around the time that it's being released. Uh, we do see a special set like that, so I definitely think it's more comparable to that. Now, we do know that this set is going to have new cards as well as reprints of cards that are not in modern, as they said. Uh, which is kind of interesting because I could see a lot of reprinted cards that aren't in modern be part of modern. I mean, there is a huge list of cards that would really, really be good here. And of course, they said minus basic lands. I mean, they did release two new cards that are going to be in it, which I will talk about after this information because they're really, really good cards. So we do know that it's going to be releasing June 14th, which if you look back at Battle Bond is within a month of when Battle Bond had released back last year. So this is around the same time that they do usually release these special sets. Now, besides the two cards that they showed us, they did say spoiler season will start at the end of May. So we don't know any... We, we don't know a whole lot of substance to this. The draft pre-release weekend will be June 8th to 9th, so they are doing a pre-release weekend for this set, which was a little bit different. I wasn't expecting them to, but they are. Uh, there's going to be 254 cards, and you do also get a buy-a-box promo. Now, we're not sure how they're going to handle the buy-a-box promos. We don't know if they're going to be a pack, like in the box toppers. We don't know if it's going to be an actual buy-a-box promo, or if it's like the more buy-a-box pack. So we're not sure there and it will be available in stores and on magic online and the magic online price per booster will be $6.99 which is could go either way so we could see actual packs now I, I'm not sure about this but we could see actual physical card packs being $6.99 but what they usually do is they make the online and say the arena prices even though this isn't standard legal just looking at their digital frontiers as well they do always make the pack prices a little bit cheaper than the actual paper version. Whether that is to make people want to purchase online more than physical cards, we're not sure, but it's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy, but I definitely think that if, if I could guess, I'm going to guess that booster packs for physical magic will be $10 a pack. That would be my guess at this point, since they are calling this a more special set. It's not really a master's. It's not really a conspiracy. We don't know what it is technically yet, so I think that it's going to be like $10 a pack. And the problem with this is that we don't don't know because there's no MSRP technically with magic cards anymore. We're not really going to be sure what stores are going to sell this for. We don't know what cost is going to be. There's been a lot of speculation that cost is going to go up for sets. So if cost goes up at War of the Spark, like a lot of people think, I even talked to Esfera, our friendly Titan table um, commentator, and he he speculated at the same time that, you know, there probably will be a, a price rise around War of the Spark. So this is coming out after that. So this set will probably be higher as well. But we don't know anything else besides the Magic Online price is $6.99. So I'm going to take a whack at $10 a pack physical magic, which is in the league of the special sets. But other than that, we're not sure yet. I'm not going to say it's an awful price because it could 
sell, the physical cards could sell for packs at $6.99, we're not sure. But as where they don't have MSRP anymore, it's, it's one of those situations where you can't even truly come to make an assumption because with no MSRP, who? Who the heck knows at this point? But they did announce two cards that I'm actually really excited to talk about because I think they're really good. So the first card is Cabal Therapist, and you can guess it by the name, it's practically a creature version of Cabal Therapy. It's called Cabal Therapist, like I said, it's one black cost, it's a creature horror, and it comes out with a 1-1 body. It's got Menace, and at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you may sacrifice a creature. When you do choose a non-land card name, then target player reveals their hand and discards all cards with that name. So, like I said, it is practically a creature version of Cabal Therapy. It's a shame that this isn't in standard because we are seeing a lot of the uh, multiple card copy decks in standard, like um, the Petitioner card, like like not Relentless Rats, um, the, the other rat card that just came out not long ago. Rat Colony is one of those cards as well. We're seeing a lot of the multiple card copy decks, and this does hit those type of decks and, you know, the decks that allow you to run more than four in a deck. So I do think that this card is really good. Now, will it be great in modern? I'm not sure. You know, a lot of the more meta decks or the more played decks don't usually run those type of cards, but who knows? We'll have to see. This card would be great in standard. I'm really sad that it's not in standard, but... And the next card is the one that's got everyone chattering. I saw this card. I got super excited for it. I think that it's overall a very good card, and it is Sarah the Benevolent. We are finally getting a Sarah Angel Planeswalker. We have been waiting for this for so long. It is a two colorless, two white, comes out with four loyalty, legendary Planeswalker Sarah. First of all, the artist is a fantastic artist. She did Chandra Torch of Defiance. She did all of the Vraskas in the last set. She did, she is a fantastic artist. She did Seraph of the Scale. She did so many great arts lately great artist. I think the art looks fantastic. The plus two is creatures you control with flying get plus one plus one until end of turn. The minus three is create a four four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. And the minus six is you get an emblem with if you control a creature, damage that would reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. This card definitely has potential in a format like modern. Now I can't really say for any other formats, you know, I'm not 100% sure. Something like EDH, this would be amazing in, but I'm not going to speak for the other format. Overall, it's a really good card. I think the plus two is really good. The minus three is really good. And the minus six, of course. You know, I do think that the minus six could be a little bit better, especially for an ultimate. But I do think that it definitely has potential to be really, really broken. So I do think overall, both of these cards that were spoiled and announced for uh, this, this modern set, um, you know, this Modern Horizon set, I keep wanting to call it Modern Masters, but this Modern Horizon set, both of the cards are really good. They are two very interesting cards, seeing Sarah finally being Planeswalker after all these years and seeing a Cabal Therapist. It, really cool overall. I do really have hope for this set. I'm really excited to see what else is going to come out of this set now. We won't really know anything else until spoiler season starts, unless they spoil a little bit more more information on it before spoiler season starts, but I do really have hope for this set because overall the, the first two cards are really interesting. I'm mainly just worried about what the MSRP, quote unquote, what stores are going to sell it for is going to be, what cost is going to be, if cost is going to go up before this. I have a lot of questions but I'm definitely hopeful for this because overall, this does look like it could be a very good set. Um, I, of course, I'm judging by two cards and slight information, but you guys will have to let me know what you personally think about this Modern Horizon set in the comments down below. If we hear anything else about it before spoiler season starts, I will make sure to let you guys know. Make sure to watch the Magic live streams I do. I usually do them twice a week so we can keep up with Magic news. Make sure to check those out. They're always on Mondays and Thursdays, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you did if you're interested in modern horizons make sure to give this video a like but i hope that you guys enjoyed this little bit of information and i will talk to you guys again really soon